Kasei Hussein is a student at the University of Texas. He knows his way around campus in a unique way. You're picking up on the echoes. Now. Yeah, so right now I'm in a, uh, to my right and my left, most likely it's this kind of look a little bit empty. Yeah. You got you it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for opening the door for me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Kusei is blind. He finds his way with a cane. Before a semester begins, he plans ahead. He walks from class to class, building a map in his mind. It's work. It takes time. Uh, it's like two weeks before the classes. I'm already starting the classes yeah. before they are stood. The right side of Kusei's face droops a bit. There's a long scar on his cheek. And because he's blind, he wears sunglasses, and his professors send reading materials months in advance. It gives him time to convert the files on his computer into audio so he can listen to them. I'm going to open it. This paper is partly based on empirical data from a phenomenological study on perspective. Is, is this the speed you listen yeah. at most of your, your articles and textbooks? Yeah. It's funny, you know, I listen to many podcasts and radio and, and other friends do too. A lot of people like to listen fast to save time. You're the fastest by far. Oh, so, so. <laughs> well, because we talk about how he manages these hardships, being blind, disfigured, what school is like. He says he's used to it. And then he tells me to think about honey. If you eat honey every day, and then the honey is sweet, correct, and nice? Yeah, yeah. If you eat honey every day, you will get tired from honey. So the, the life is not everything sweet. You must have challenges to feel the sweet of it. Kusei is a man who savors his hardships, which is kind of difficult to understand because he's had so many. I'm a refugee and I'm not hiding that. And uh, I'm a refugee and I'm proud. He grew up in Mosul, Iraq. He misses it. It was beautiful. His home was on the banks of the Tigris River. But when the war came, he says you couldn't find safety anywhere. One day when he was 17, he was playing volleyball. It was at a sand lot in a community stadium, and a truck pulled right up into the court. He looked back at the driver. Then he stopped, and he, he looked left or right, and he pushed the horn of the car. And like just sound of vacuum, like whoa. As he puts it, Everything began to flow up into the air. His memory is abstract. He recalls a picture of the last thing he saw. Human, dark, fire. When he hit the ground, a little blood ran from his nose. He got up and began to run. Shrapnel rained down around him. Troop, 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 troop. He was hit in the head and he fell to the ground. Eventually, Kusei's father found him. He took him to a clinic. Kusei couldn't talk. And when they saw my injury, they told my dad, go ahead, take care of your other kids. Kusei, half an hour, he will die. They took him to a makeshift morgue. Bodies were set next to him. Others piled on top of him. What were you thinking when they were laying bodies on top of you? I'm, I'm thinking, like, I don't know what to do because I, I could not speak. I just swallowed the blood and I could not move. His father came to take his body home. He discovered Kusei was still alive. No one else had noticed. So he took Kusei to get help. Kusei ended up at a U.S. military hospital. He was wheeled into the resuscitation bay. And I felt like cool, cool, cool room. The team cut off his clothes. I just start feel the Caesar. They put IVs in his veins. And I went in a coma for 12 days. When he woke up, he had no nose, no skin left on his right cheek. The bone is exposed. He couldn't see. The next two years were difficult. He was in pain. He would sleep during the day. He'd be awake at night. Because um, I, I started, don't want to see people. Uh, and like, I want to do something I could not. So cry most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crying a lot. I want to do something, but I don't know how. Doctors Without Borders, also known internationally by our French name... Then one day, a glimmer of hope. He hears an ad for a Doctors Without Borders recovery hospital in Jordan. He applies, and he's accepted. He's looking forward to having his face repaired. He then asks the doctor about getting his vision back, but... He told me, Qusay, I'm sorry. Um, your eyes is, um, is already gone. He went back into his room, and then... 
I try to kill myself. Uh, uh, like, um, but um, I start thinking, I'm in a test. I will pass this test or I fail it. But if I study for it, I will pass it. I will pass this test. So he showered, he sat, he prayed, he thought about God. So he gave, he gave us a brain to think. Is like to use this brain in a negative way or use it in a positive way. So he created me in a beautiful image. Why I want to damage this image? Yeah, I, I told him in a test and he, I, I think God, he want to test me to see how much I have patience. So Kusei would survive that test and many others. Over 60 surgeries, applying for asylum in the U.S., learning English, going to college. And now I know what he means by honey. So the, the life is not everything sweet. You must have challenges to feel the sweet of it. Um, what's, what's so great about being blind? To me, I don't know. It's a beautiful. I don't know how to describe it to you, but it's, uh, I love it. And uh, I learn from it a lot. I feel like I could see in my heart. True, I don't have any eyes, but I could feel it. Maybe I feel it better than a person who have eyes. For KUT and the Transom Traveling Workshop, I'm Terry O'Connor.